Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hannah. I am a UK registered nurse of 21 years. I have been a university um, nursing lecturer for seven years and I have also been an NMC OSCE programme lead. And I'm sharing on this channel, hopefully lots of advice and help to help you self-study for your OSCE and nursing studies, and also to develop and, and support your nursing knowledge for your nursing practice. Please like, share and subscribe these videos and please share all your success stories because I love adding those to our success playlist as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk through the MSU and Urinalysis Clinical Skills Station. So this is now a 12 minute station being increased from eight minutes in September 2024. So lots of time now to complete the station correctly. And there's key things you need to do in the station, which I'm going to talk through. But one of the really important parts is understanding what those results mean in that urinalysis and being able to give the correct information and follow up interventions and, and actions on the basis of those results. And this is often an area which is done quite poorly and is a fail. So I'm going to talk through potential results as well and those nursing um, interactions and interventions that we need to complete. So in relation to your NMC exam, like I said, it's 12 minute station. And I suppose there's three parts to the station. So you need to explain to the patient how to collect a midstream urine sample correctly. You need to carry out your urinalysis using and verbalizing the correct technique. You need to document your results correctly. And like I said, you need to explain the results to the patient and verbalize the appropriate plan of care and follow up interventions depending on the results. Now you will get a urine sample that will test positive for the things in your urinalysis. So it's not a plain sample of urine. So always be looking for something which is testing positive. And we're gonna go through the very three common scenarios that you get in this station. What equipment are you gonna have? You're gonna have your urinalysis strips, um, you're going to have a specimen container, which you're going to give to the patient. You'll have access to your fob watch because you'll need to um, uh, measure the number of seconds from you, when you've dipped the urine to when you can start reading your different components on your strip. And as you're going to be in contact with bodily fluids, you're going to need your PPE, apron and gloves. Um, and you might, if you can get a piece of paper towel or piece of gauze to put your test strip on after you've dipped it, that is really helpful. So paperwork, so you can have your scenario and you're gonna have your sheet for you to document your results on. So your scenario um, might just be something like this. You're in a GP surgery and you've been asked to carry out a urinalysis on Adam or potentially, um, you know, you could be in the hospital as well. It could be either situation. Normally all your ID and allergy checks have been performed for this station as well. But again, just double check and read your scenario. And you're gonna have your documentation sheet here. So you'll see, those eight measurements of the urinalysis strip. And then there is a value section where you will document your results. So station breakdown, obviously you need to explain the procedure, gain consent. You need to explain to the patient how to collect an MSU. And I'm gonna go through that. You need to collect and check your equipment. You need to perform your urinalysis to the correct timings, verbalizing and documenting your results. You need to dispose of your waste and you need to explain the results to the patient and verbalise your follow up care and interventions. And as with all our stations, check in the patient and end in the station professionally. So key principles, again, privacy and dignity, decontaminating your hands using World Health Organization seven steps, introducing yourself to the patient and explaining the procedure and gaining consent. So how would you explain this procedure? So I might say something like, um, you know, Adam, I've come here to um, take a sample of urine, um, a midstream sample of urine, and I'm going to do a urinalysis, which um, will allow me to test urine for different um, components and to look for any abnormalities. So we can, um, we, so we know if we need to change any treatment or any medication, um, it can look for things such as protein and glucose and any signs of infection. I'm going to um, talk to you about how to collect the sample of urine um, so you know how to do that correctly. Um, and obviously, I'll discuss the results with you once I've done your analysis. So do you consent for me to do this? You know, have you got any questions? Something like that. You might do it better than that, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so how are we going to collect an MSU? So we need to ask the patient firstly to wash their hands because we want to reduce any risk of cross-contamination. If it's a woman, we want them to part the labia and to clean the meatus, where the urine comes out from front to back. 
if it's a man and they are not circumcised, they need to retract the foreskin and clean around the meatus, um, kind of top to bottom. We want them to then um, pass a small amount of urine directly into the toilet and then stop the flow. So pass a small amount of urine, maybe for like two to three seconds, stop the flow. Then they need to get the specimen pot and hold it a few centimeters away from the urethra and urinate into the cup until it is at least half full or three quarters full. Then they can just um, remove the pot and finish voiding and urinating into the toilet. Um, ask them to apply the lid to the pot wash their hands and bring the sample pot back to you. It's important they don't like contaminate the inside of the pot. So you want to make sure they don't put their hands inside or, you know, do anything else. They just want to unscrew the lid and to urinate into it as we've explained. After you've explained the, um, the MSU, you're going to go and get your equipment. Decontaminate your hands. Obviously, you want to get your apron and gloves. You need to get your urinalysis test strips, confirm they're dry, intact, and the expiry date, and that the color has not changed. So open them up and just have a look inside. This is important because if they have got wet or um, you know, they're out of the expiry day, it is going to affect your reading, which is then going to affect your treatment to the patient. You want to get your clean, dry specimen pot. Make sure you've got your fob watch and a piece of paper towel of gauze is available. Come back to your patient and give the patient the specimen pot and ask them to avoid touching or contaminating the inside. Once you've done that, the examiner is then going to give you um, a sample of urine. So obviously put on your apron and gloves, loosen the lid on your sample pot and get your test strip out. Make sure you don't touch the colour squares with your fingers and you just hold the test strip at the end. Get yourself set up so you're ready to go, okay? Have your fob watch where you can see it um, and you want to dip your sample, your strip into the sample pot no longer than one second. Run it along the edge of your container. You'll see that in the practical video and lie the um, test strip flat onto your tray and look at the time. And then we've got to be really, really careful with timings and read it correctly. So like I said, it's important to make a note of the time, okay? Because you've got extra time in the station now and it's 12 minutes, you have got the luxury of waiting until the second hand is somewhere where it is easy for you to read, so like 12, 3, 6 or 9, um, because we do need to read at the correct intervals. So glucose is going to be the first strip that we read. So we're going to wait 30 seconds from when we've dipped it. So if our um, second hand is at 12, we're going to wait until it gets to six. And we are just looking to see if the glucose has changed. So the darker and more brown it gets, the more glucose that is present in the urine. After 30 seconds, we're going to wait a further 10 seconds until we are at 40 seconds and we're going to read the ketones. Okay. Again, this is the left hand side on the on the um, tub on the box um, is all the negatives and the further we go the more um, present or more positive that sample is so 40 seconds for ketones obviously the darker purple the more ketones is present we're then going to wait a further five seconds so 45 seconds in total we're then going to wait a further five seconds so 45 seconds in total, I'm going to read the Pacific Gravity. So Pacific Gravity will always be a number, okay? If your Pacific Gravity is here, so 1.00, this is a very dilute um, sample of urine. And if it's up here, 1.030 and more yellow, it's a very concentrated sample of urine, so the patient could be dehydrated. We're going to wait another 15 seconds, so 60 seconds in total. So if we've dipped at 12, the hand has come all the way back to 12 again, and we're going to read for blood. Again, if it's yellow, there's no blood. And if it's green, there's a large amount of blood in the urine. At 60 seconds, we can then also read the pH. So the pH, like your Pacific gravity, will always be a number. So normal urine pH is around five to six. With 60 seconds again, you can also read your protein. So it'll go from this light green to a darker green. And 60 seconds as well, you can also read your nitrites. So this will go from white to pink if positive okay so your blood ph protein and nitrites you can read one after the other because they all are read after 60 seconds you then need to wait a full two minutes from when you first dipped it okay so when that first dip you want to wait for that hand to go to the second time to the 12 o'clock um, and you're going to read your leukocytes again it will be this whitey gray if it's negative and purple if it is positive 
This is the hardest bit of the station for um, international nurses. Um, it just takes quite a lot of kind of thought and process. Um, again, you might feel a little bit stressed with time. You've got plenty of time. So just you can just take your time, breathe, dip, watch your clock and just verbalize each time. If you read it before the time um, that is required, then it will be a critical fail. So just be really careful. The examiner will be watching you. So, you know, 30 seconds has passed. I'm reading my glucose. OK, 40 seconds has passed and I'm reading my ketones. 45 seconds has passed and I'm reading my Pacific gravity. So just be really clear with that. Once you have verbalised and done your reading, dispose of all your waste in the clinical waste bin, remove your PPE and de decontaminate your hands using World Health Organisation 7 steps. It is best practice to take your gloves off, decontaminate your hands and then do your documentation. And because you now have got four extra minutes in the station, you should be following best practice. We shouldn't really be documenting with gloves which have sampled urine. It is not particularly hygienic and is a cross-contamination risk. So... You can keep your test strip out if you feel that you're not going to remember it, which is okay. So just keep it flat on your tray. Don't pick it up because obviously you've taken your PPE off at this point. Um, and you're going to document your results. So you want to document them as I've put here. So if it was a glucose sample that was positive, I'd put the three pluses that matched the um, strip. And then anything that was negative, I'm going to write negative in. Remember, specific gravity will always be a number and pH will always be a number as well. Once you've done that and you're happy you've documented it, you can then put on a single glove and dispose of your urinalysis strip into the bin. And then we need to interpret the results and give the results to the patient. So again, just going back to what we I talked about at the very beginning. So if it's positive for glucose, it obviously is showing an increased blood glucose level. So what would we need to do? We definitely need to perform a capillary blood glucose. We'd want to ask the patient if they were known type 1 or type 2 diabetic. We would want to escalate to the doctor for further review. I would most probably want to take further blood samples looking at kind of fasting glucose as well. If they are a diabetic, we want to make sure that they are taking their medication correctly or if they're having any side effects, which is stopping them from taking that medication. We definitely want to make sure they are following their diabetic diet and they're obviously doing some exercise. Um, and we want to know, you know, are they keeping their blood sugar diary? Is this been normal? Is this a recent trend? It's so really important to think about all those follow up actions we would do for someone that's got an increased blood glucose level. The other sample which is common and com can come up is the sample which is positive for protein. This is normally a sign of undiagnosed hypertension, so high blood pressure. So again, one of the first things we'd want to do as a nurse is obviously perform a manual blood pressure and check that. We'd want to review the patient's diet, exercise, and if they are on any medication or are known hypertensive, and we'd want to check they're taking their medication or if they're having any side effects or adverse reactions, which is stopping them from taking it. We'd want to escalate this to the doctors for review. We could also review things which we know can um, cause high blood pressure. So smoking, um, alcohol intake, like I said, diet, exercise. It can also be a sign of um, nephropathy, so damage to the nephron caused by diabetes as well. So it is important to rule out and make sure whether they are diabetic or not as well. And again, all needs escalating to the medical team. The other um, sample could be one that's positive for leukocytes and nitrites. Um, so like I said at the beginning, this is normally um, a sign of infection. Sometimes you get a little bit of protein as a sign of infection, but um, it's not the main um, thing that would test positive um, if there was an infection. And we just want to obviously take a MSU and send it to microbiology. We'd want to assess for signs of infection, pain, discomfort and urinary frequency, whether they've got a temperature, whether they've been feeling unwell. Again, we want to escalate to the doctors for review and increase fluid intake to 2 to 2.5 litres a day. Once you have given the results to the patient, um, again, just check if they've got any questions or concerns based on that information you've given. Um, if you're in the hospital, again, just make sure they've got the call bell or if they've got the GP number um, if you're in the community. Go back and double check your documentation for the station. Make sure you've completed it all correctly and you haven't made any errors. 
So critical fails in the station is not explaining the correct method for taking the MSU. So make sure you're really clear on the steps on how to do this with a female and a male patient. Not um, reading the urine, urine analysis before the required time. I think it's really helpful to buy some urinalysis strips for this station. You can get them off Amazon and practice. You can make up your own urine samples with some sugary water um, or some kind of protein drink as well to get a protein sample. Um, it is something that does take, um, you know, just some practice really to get all the alignments, you know, the reading the verbalising, the documentation, the timings, all correct. Um, obviously, if you read the wrong results for the sample, so if your um, results are different to what that test sample is meant to be, then that will be a critical fail. If you see if you do incorrect documentation and a big area of fail is not giving that correct follow-up actions to the patient based on the results, so it is really important you understand um, what the urinalysis measures and what are the key things nurses should do following up on any positive samples. So next step, so like I said, learn how to explain how to collect an MSU, buy some urinalysis strips and practice, um, but also you can see the pot, you can see the timings, you can see the colours on the strips, so you can just understand um, what is being measured on each part of that strip. Learn the normal and abnormal results and what to verbalise to the patient. So those last few slides I went through, you know, really commit those to memory and understand them. And start practicing with a timer on um, and with a fob watch or some kind of clock with a second hand so you're getting those timings exactly right. <laughs>